65 and chapter 69, section 2706 of the New York City Charter, a joint meeting of the Bronx Borough Service Cabinet and Bronx Borough Board will take place this morning, today, Thursday, April 27th, starting at 10.05, virtually via WebEx. Once again, I want to welcome you all to our Bronx Borough Service Cabinet and Bronx Borough Board for those that are new. Um, welcome, 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 and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, before we begin roll call, we just want to uh, make uh, an announcement and uh, congratulate uh, Carla Cabrera uh, Carrera from CB7, who was voted in as the new district manager. Carla, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Great. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Um, so we'll start roll call with community boards. CB1. Good morning, Arlene Parks. Good morning, Madam Chair. CB2. Good morning, Madam Deputy. Ralph Acevedo, District Manager. Good morning, all. Congratulations, Carla. Good morning, Rafael. CB3. Good morning, CB3, Reverend Frederick Crawford, and also District Manager Etta Redder. Good morning, good morning. Community Board 4. Good morning, Robert Galmendez, Chair, and congratulations. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Community Board 5. Good morning, Deputy Borough President and everyone. This is Ken Brown. I'm the District Manager of Community Board 5. And Carla, welcome to the crew. Thank you. Community Board 6. Rafael Murray, District Manager at Community Board 6. Congrats, Carla. Good morning, Rafael. Community Board 7. Jahai Ramirez, Chair. And Carla, I couldn't have been more proud to be working with alongside you. Congratulations. Thank you all. This is Carla Cabrera Carrera. I'm the new District Manager. And, and thank you for your congratulations. Thank you. Congrats, DM. Community Board 8. Hi, good morning, everyone. Nick Fazio, Bronx Community Board 8. I'm in for Chair Spalter. I'm the Chair of the Economic Development Committee. Great to see you all, and congratulations to all the new DMs. Good morning, Nick. Great to see you. Community Board 9. Hi, good morning, Madam Deputy. This is Shirley San Andres Alonso, Deputy District Manager at TB9. Congratulations, Carla. Good morning, Shirley. Thank you. Uh, community board 10. Community board 11. Community board 12. Um, we will move on with the city council representatives. From District 8, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, Council Member Diana Ayala. District 11, Council Member Eric Dinowitz. District 12, Council Member Kevin Riley. Good morning, Madam Deputy. Good morning, board members. Simone Jones, Chief of Staff for Council Member Riley. Present and congratulations, Carla. Good morning, Simone. District 13, Council Member Marjorie Velasquez. Good morning, everyone. Stephanie Rodriguez, Council, um, Council Member Marjorie Velasquez's office. Um, congratulations, Carla. District 14, Council Member Pierina Sanchez. Good morning, everybody. Sam Cardenas here on behalf of Council Member Sanchez. And congratulations to Carla. Very, very excited to continue working with you in this new capacity. Beautiful. District 15, Council Member Oswald Feliz. District 16, Council Member Althea Stevens. Hey, good morning, everybody. Tariq Israel, Deputy Chief of Staff for Council Member Althea Stevens. Um, Carla, I never worked with you, but shout out to you and your new role. Beautiful. Thank you, Ty. District 17, Council Member Rafael Salamanca. Good morning, Madam Deputy, and to everyone in attendance. Shanna Knotts, Chief of Staff to Council Member Salamanca, and congratulations to you, Carla. Good morning, Shanna. District 18, Council Member Amanda Farias. 
Good morning, everyone. Randy Malman, Chief of Staff, Councilor Fettias. Um, just want to say congratulations to Carla. Looking forward to working with you in this capacity. Beautiful. Great. Thank you. And I see that we are joined by some uh, city agencies. Of course, we have the mayor's office CAU unit on. We also have uh, NYC Department of Aging, NYC DEP, um, Parks is on as well as a presenter. Um, any other city agencies that are on, please announce yourselves. Um, good morning, Deputy World okay. President. SBS. Um, of this course. is Michael from Michael Fong from SBS. Beautiful. Thank you, Michael. And this is Benjamin Solitaire with the Civic Engagement Commission. Civic Engagement. Beautiful. Thank Good morning, you so this much. is Alina Da with the Mayor's Community Affairs. <coughs> Thank you. Good morning, this is Jocelyn Bennett and Tracy Becca Brown, who's our new staffer here, um, covering the Bronx on DSS. Congratulations, Carla. Congratulations. Thank you for joining us, DSS. Any other city agencies? Wonderful. Okay, well, great. We, as always, uh, we have a robust uh, agenda, a jam-packed agenda for, for you all, but all very important presenters. And so we want to thank the presenters for, for being on and all of you for your attention. First up, we have um, the Bronx overall economic development. Really quickly, last fall, the Bronx Borough President announced her appointment of Robert Walsh as the interim president of the Bronx Overall Economic Development Corporation, the BOEDC. And so working with the borough president and her leadership team, Rob will be charged with restructuring and reorganizing the economic and workforce organization, as well as fostering and developing key strategic partnerships between public and private institutions. Um, formerly, Rob served as the SBS commissioner for 12 years under the Bloomberg administration. Um, making it the city's most innovative agency during his tenure. And so today we just want to take a moment to formally introduce him to the board and service cab cabinet and provide you all with an overview of the changes uh, within the organization. So Rob, the virtual floor is yours and welcome to our borough board. And you may be on mute. Can you hear me now? There we go. There you go. I'm joined by Marshall Strawbridge, who directs our small businesses and community outreach. And some of you may have already met, met Marshall um, and, and his work. He's been getting around to many of the districts, many of the business improvement districts and, and task force. Uh, what I want to do today is, is give a, a bit of an overview of uh, BOEDC and where my focus is going to be, you know, over the uh, uh, next a couple of months. Uh, you're going to be hearing um, at a future meeting from our new head of tourism, the Bronx Tourism Council, uh, Suma Arzu Brown. Uh, if you have not seen her work already, uh, I'd suggest, and if you could help me do this, promote the ilovethebronx.com website which is becoming quickly a, a place for all events, all activities and initiatives that are taking place in the Bronx. Uh, Suma has uh, uh, hit the ground running right before Bronx Week. Um, someone told me it's Bronx Week. It's, it's, it's more like Bronx Weeks, uh, you know, given the number of events that are, that are taking place. But um, she, she's having a great time in terms of not only building a staff, but uh, working to promote the borough's rich history. My focus uh, has been primarily on um, capital access and getting more uh, loans and grants out to our small businesses and businesses. And also I've been doing a good amount of work um, looking, uh, meeting with businesses that are looking to do business, either moving to the Bronx or uh, growing in the Bronx. And, what I'd like to do quickly is just give you a, a quick overview of uh, some of the things. So Marshall, if you can help me out uh, to get people familiar with um, the, the organization, go, go to the slides here. Okay, we got it. 
All good. Great. All, right. All good. All right. So let's let's go to the next slide. Next slide. Next one. So this is this is a little bit of an overview of the organization, as I mentioned. Um, you know, divided uh, among economic development and, and Bronx tourism. I'm going to focus uh, on on the on the middle uh, area in terms of economic development. If we can do the next slide quickly. And, uh, we also have the Business Initiative Corporation of New York that works with us. The, the key piece of this, for those who may not be familiar. This is our lending arm. These are the folks who are out there working with businesses on low interest loans. We go to the next slide and, and talk about you know, our plans in terms of moving forward. The key thing is uh, in terms of moving forward is a number of things, creating loan packages. And that's something that we're working right now. In fact, I just left a meeting of the BIC where they were working on a number of loan packages uh, of uh, Bronx businesses uh, to get more capital out to businesses and, and forging uh, partnerships with many of the organizations, whether they're banks, whether they're nonprofit organizations or community-based organizations in the area. Um, the second thing is the utilization of the empowerment zone funds for businesses to rebuild and grow. The Empowerment Zone uh, program has been around since the days that Bill Clinton was the president. We still have resources there. Those resources can end up helping us bring more businesses into designated areas, particularly in the South Bronx. The third area that uh, is a key area of focus is taking more advantage, basically, of existing programs. Uh, there's something called the Community Advantage Program, which I'll talk about a little bit more in detail. And that is to participate in the SBA's Community Advantage Program. And then finally, a key piece of all of this, as we focus on getting more capital to small businesses, is getting our CDFI, our Community Financial Institution Fund, designation reissued. And I think this is a very important part. Uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, the Bronx doesn't have enough active CDFIs. Uh, we see many of our small businesses who are uh, often denied uh, from the traditional banks. It's important that we have nonprofits and CDFIs that, that are here ready to help. We can go to the next slide. Um, and again, you know, just a, a recap on this is, you know, that again and again, you know, that, that point about getting empowerment zone funds into the hands of businesses that, that are here already or existing. One of the things that we're doing, you know, at the office is taking a look and, and gathering all the data and information of, of businesses that, um, uh, took advantage of the PPP loans. Uh, we will go back to them and, and ask them how they're doing. Um, and, um, you know, can we be assisting uh, more as they come out of the pandemic and begin growing their businesses? Um, the, the Community Advantage Loan Program, uh, the details there, I'm not going to read all this. You, you can see it, uh, you know, basically it gives us a advantage. One advantage is that the SBA will back participating lenders. So it, it becomes a more attractive piece for us and for those who are looking for capital. Uh, it also increases our visibility uh, with the SBA to take advantage of other um, uh, programs that they have. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is combining the Community Advantage Loan Program with some of these uh, funds that are available through the uh, Empowerment Zone funds. The BOEDC board has approved up to $10 million in, in Empowerment Zone funds to be used. Uh, we're waiting for sign off from the state and the city. And within the next month, I am confident that we will have new loan programs that we can all talk about 
and getting them out to small businesses at a low interest uh, loan. Uh, CDFI is a, a uh, another area that we're tackling. Um, again, it's uh, Treasury investing federal dollars, um, and it is important for us to get this certification to open up the door of other, whether it's federal or state uh, money, uh, to invest in, in low-income funds. It's, it's another tool that we could end up using. It also puts us on a, on, on a much higher level. Um, this is something that uh, is so important for us to get uh, reissued. And those, those are, you know, basically, you know, the key key points. I, I think the the the. Let me go back to the where everybody is. The key piece on all of this is launching these programs, launching these programs quickly, and getting. Um, you know, getting out in front of community leaders like 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 all of you, um, with forums that explain, uh, you know, whether it's energy cost savings programs, helping small businesses with machinery, just being very aggressive. And um, I I see the next 30, 60 days as a really important time where we have all of this stuff in place, and then and then getting uh, getting these programs out and having forums. Hitting the ground, marketing these 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 initiatives across the board. I've been meeting with our uh, partners uh, like the Bronx Chamber, like Sobro, and and many others. You know, as we as we as we go forward in making these things happen, uh, it is a challenge. As we see more of the banks tightening up their regulations, we see more of the traditional banks. Uh, you know, if you're a small business. And you have under two million dollars of revenue. If you had some uh, challenges of credit history in the past, uh, there are not many places to uh, turn to. Uh, we are going to be that organization that our small businesses in the Bronx turn to, um, and we're we're on the cusp of making that happen. I look forward to uh, coming back to this board when we have all of the pieces in place, and where we can end up coming up with a strategy uh, to get the, the information out. You can see a whiteboard in, in behind me uh, where we're sort of laying out the, the different steps that we're taking to put all of this in, in place. Any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, I'm, I'm open to it. I'm open to meet with your groups, uh, to, you know, getting out there. Uh, Marshall has certainly done it. I've been doing it, and the, and the team here at, at DOAGC is pretty excited going forward. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, before we open it up to questions, I just want to, um, and and I don't know, Marsh, if you can pull it back up, uh, but I missed the the mission statement of BOEDC. I think it's important for folks to to be clear on the mission statement of the organization um, and how is how is this new uh, mission and vision different from previous leadership well, or previous uh, I, I don't think the mission statement is different, uh, Deputy. I think the key thing for, for us is to focus on where the greatest need is. And the greatest need is in um, getting capital access in the hands of, of businesses. Uh, we are still out there. We're, we're still working with business improvement districts. We're still out there in terms of if we can put the mission statement. Can they all see the mission statement? I'll share it. Um, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the key thing is, um, and let, and let's, and I think this is an important point of, of going back to the mission statement and, 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 and uh, get going through the details on that. So if you, if you look at, you know, strengthening and expanding, uh, Bronx based businesses, as well as providing incentives to encourage businesses to establish or relocate in the Bronx. I think the one thing is, is develop tools internally. But the second piece of that is to forge relationships, not only in the borough, but throughout um, government agencies. I've been spending time with uh, the New York City Economic Development Corporation. I've been spending time with M the uh, Empire State Development Corporation, uh, you know, to, um, 
see what they're working on, quite frankly, and, and some of the businesses that they're working on. I think, I think some of this groundwork that we're doing is going to pay off. Uh, uh, it, it already is in terms of Economic Development Corporation starting to refer people uh, to us uh, about doing business in the Bronx. Um, I'm asking a lot of questions. I, you know, as, as the deputy mentioned, I spent 12 years as a small business services commissioner. When I see empty buildings, when I see things that have been underutilized, I've been asking questions about why has that building been empty, you know, so long? Who owns the building? How could we end up helping the, you know, the community-based organization? I was out yesterday on 161st Street. There's been an, an empty building that's been owned by uh, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase on the north side of 161st Street, right near River Avenue. Uh, and I, I was, I was walking around with folks, you know, yesterday on that. I've been looking at, you know, uh, manufacturing buildings. But you know, the 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 the, the key piece of that is getting um, a, a full inventory of that. And, and seeing where we can end up matching the growth with some of the inventory that we have on hand. Uh, you know, the, the, the key piece of our mission statement, as I stress over and over again, is that financial packaging of us getting capital access to small businesses, uh, you know, from the economic development side. I, you'll, you're gonna see other initiatives that um, uh, Marshall is, is working on, he's, he's currently working on a, uh, a loan, uh, a grant program that uh, we got from uh, New York Power Authority uh, that would go to nonprofits and colleges and universities to help them reduce cost and initiate uh, uh, green programs. Um, these, are, these, are, these are all, um, things that, that are going to be coming out of this office on economic development. Great. And really quickly, before we turn it into, que turn into questions, Marshall, can you introduce yourself, your title, and, and what you do so that folks start getting familiarized with you? Sure. Thank you. Uh, my name is Marshall Strawbridge. I'm the director of small business and community outreach here at BOEDC. Uh, I primarily focus on representing the borough president on the uh, 11 business improvement districts in the Bronx. Um, I'm participating in the Kingsbridge Armory Community Working Group along with some other working groups and doing uh, some of the special projects that, that Rob just mentioned. And also, can you both share your contact information in the chat so that um, if, if community boards and council members need to get in touch, they have a direct contact, that would be super helpful. Sure. Wonderful. Any questions for BOEDC? I see, Anthony, I see a hand up. Anthony? Good morning, Madam Deputy. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, a quick question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Walsh, for coming out to chat about the work that you're doing. I'm very interested in learning how is BOEDC engaging community boards in this aggressive uh, economic development uh, plan? We, we know community boards all ha are working through committees and through stuff as members to determine, uh, to also have envisioning ideas around economic development, especially community board one, and is wanted to chat with you more if not offline, if necessary to talk about how is BODC working with community boards and chairs and, and chairs of, of, of committees to, as you work on this uh, economic de uh, development vision for the Bronx. Great, it's a great question and, and um... You know, one of, one of the ways we're doing is, is Marshall's been getting out, uh, you know, he's, he's been here a short time, but he's been getting out to, uh, you know, into the community and my, my, myself, um, you know, I, I look forward to uh, meeting you and meeting so many of the other folks. Uh, I've been a little hesitant uh, of getting out, you know, I, I've been, I've been trying to bake the, bake the uh, programs and getting those capital access programs in place, which has taken a lot of time. But the key thing is, one, is to get them out to you, work with you, identify those that, that uh, need assistance. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of shoe, shoe leather, quite frankly. It's, it's getting out and, and, and meeting people across the borough 
and, and seeing where we could end up helping with, with assistance to small businesses. I hope that I, I hope that uh, answers the question. But I I, I look forward to uh, meeting you and you know CB one obviously is is seeing a lot of activity. Um, you know I noticed today um, uh, there uh, you know there's uh, a good deal of interest around the industrial business zones of, of your particular district. Uh, where could we end up filling in, particularly on loans and 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 and, and low interest loans? that 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 uh, help uh, when we do meet and we walk around and you have specific ideas uh, when we do meet and we uh, 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 walk around um, uh, we're going to come up with things that are individual to each each and every every one of the districts and just for the record, um, once the BOEDC uh, initiatives and loan packages are ready to, to launch, we will bring BOEDC back to present on those items. Can I see your hand raised? Thank you, Deputy uh, Borough President and uh, Mr. Walsh. Thank you uh, for your efforts. I'm not sure I have a question. I just wanted to compliment uh, you and your office. Um, BOEDC has been a foundational uh, member of the Jerome Avenue Revitalization uh, collaborative, and we have a founding member in Michael Nixon from your office, and he has been absolutely vital and pleasant uh, for the collaborative. Any any resources that are made through BOEDC and just his initiative and participation have really vitiated uh, the collaborative. So good good job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Michael is a real gentleman. Uh, he's been in this office for a number of years. He's a, a great asset for us, and uh, uh, you know takes his work very serious and uh, certainly, certainly in a detailed manner. Yep, a and he is rather pleasant. Yes, he is. <laughs> Thank you, great. Nick. I see your hand raised. Sorry, trying to unmute. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation and uh, just to one of the previous questions regarding outreach to committees and community boards. Marshall was actually with us economic development committee for CB8 on Friday and we visited 26 businesses and spoke to business owners uh, and got to to discuss several things, particularly some of their uh, their pain points. So I want to thank Marshall for joining us. I think it was a very productive walkthrough on Friday. One one issue that, um, and, and I'm sure BOEDC has thought of this, but one of the biggest issues aside from access to capital or concomitant with access to capital is the understanding among business owners of how to leverage capital uh, for their benefit. And we, we, we definitely dealt this during the PPP when we were trying to get uh, more businesses to apply for PPP to convince them that it was a it was a good deal for them in, in terms of how to leverage that to their long term benefit. So I know some CDFIs do this uh, where they provide, I guess, financial literacy support as sort of back end guidance and mentorship to some of the businesses to help them understand how to manage their loans, how to manage their finances. And to, to, you know, and I've had this conversation with many of them. If you're getting a 2% or a 1% loan, that is a really good deal. And that can be really leveraged to a business's advantage, but we have to convince them in that and then show them exactly how to do that. So I think that that's another component that I hope BOEDC has some sort of, uh, um, you know, idea of what, what might be done to, to address that. Thank you. Yeah, and it, it, Nick, it's a good point, and I'm looking forward to getting together with you on on some of the issues that you have up in the in Riverdale, uh, King, uh, Kingsbridge area. But on on that is, you know, and um, I, I I remind myself on on an almost daily basis is to uh, keep the focus on getting these approvals. Uh, I also know that you have to build out safety nets. I spent 12 years you know, as a small business commissioner. I sent, set up these business solution centers. We have one in the Bronx. Uh, we need to fully leverage that. 
We also need, you know, the help of others, uh, whether it's the Small Business Development Center at Lehman College uh, or some of the work that, that is happening at some of the other business schools. You know, we can't, we can't do it alone. Um, but we need, we, we, we need to build that apparatus out uh, so people know where to go when they, to your point, when they, when they get the resources. And, and and build their businesses and um, uh, you'll you'll see that from us uh, but uh, my, 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 my key laser beam focus right now is to get the access to these resources that have been sitting around or that we have not um, applied for in the past and then we could end up building out some of these other pieces that you you talked about Nick. Great, and I think we have time for one more question. We have uh, Robert, CB4. Yeah, so I just want to bring it out to to Mr. Walsh that uh, any help that you can give us with that property on 161st Street that belongs to Chase, please do. I would hate for that thing to stay abandoned for at least an entire generation, and the property actually runs up to just, uh, it abuts uh, the McDonald's. It's the whole thing. Yeah. So if yeah, you finally move yeah. on on it, please, whatever you can do, because it's it's a blight and also at night uh, it's a spot for nefarious activities. I was out I was out in front of it yesterday. I was wearing my old hat. Uh, uh, the deputy probably didn't tell you I, I was I was once a bid director in, in a former life. And I and I, I certainly felt it yesterday when I was out there. Um, it is a blight. It has been empty. Um, you know, I don't know what JP Morgan Chase's intentions are. Uh, if they have any intentions, they haven't moved on it in, in years because they, they, they've left it empty. And, you know, in my judgment, that McDonald's area is, is could use a little re-energizing. Uh, it's a tired old plaza. And, you know, my hope is that we can end up making some uh, enhancements uh, in that area. But uh, I'll keep reaching out. I'm going to keep reaching out uh, because um, it, it has been a problem, and 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 I and I think um, you know what I, what I've seen in some other districts are build, buildings that have been empty, particularly large buildings on retail corridors. Uh, you know, it would be a good forum for us to you know talk about. Uh, 149th Street is another example. Um, you know, the DOT had a municipal parking garage there at the north side of the block, uh, just across from Lincoln Lincoln Hospital. You know, I see that as an opportunity, and I just wonder where that is. You know, um, you know, on the on the agenda of DOT to, to make something happen there. I see a hand raised. Look at that. I'm I'm, I'm getting <laughs> questions, and I'm now getting. I'm going to get myself in trouble. Yeah, and, and and unfortunately, we we have to we have to wrap on questions for BOEDC because we have three more presenters. Right. But I just ask BOEDC to please share your contact info in the chat so that we can um, make these connections with the board members. And just know um, for everyone on, we will be um, bringing BOEDC back. If not me, but in June, um, but in the interim, he is here full time as interim uh, president. So is uh, Marshall and the rest of the team. So please, BOEDC, if you can share your your contact information, and we will follow up with the presentation after our borough board meeting. Thank you so much, Rob, uh, Marshall, the BOEDC staff for for joining us this morning and for your presentation we look forward to seeing you in in our in future borough boards and um a, a smooth transition and a natural transition to the nyc best program the nyc business express service team uh, the acronym best is an initiative of the new york city department of small business services um, that connects business owners to a single point of contact who can help them navigate various agencies um, to open or run their storefront businesses at no cost at all. And with that, we have Michael Fong, the Executive Director of Go uh, Government Navigation for NYC SBS. Michael, the virtual floor is yours. Welcome to our borough board. 
Thank you, Deputy, for having me here today. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Fong. I'm the Executive Director of Government Navigation on behalf of New York City Department of Small Business Services. So I oversee the NYC BEST program, which is the Business Express Service Team. So our goal is to help business owners to save money, uh, which positions them into a business-friendly environment. Uh, I just want to go over quickly uh, how the mission of our agency. Um, our agency mission is to help unlock economic potential and create economic security for all New Yorkers by connecting New Yorkers to good jobs, creating stronger businesses, and building thriving neighborhoods across five boroughs. Um, an overview of this NYC Best program is to by connecting business owner with our team um, as a single point of contact. Um, the single point of contact in this case will be small business advocate, will be connecting business owner with different resources, uh, including government agencies. So um, what does it mean by you know, working with a single point of contact. So by having a business owner coming with a um, single point of contact will help them to, you know, get the license and permit faster and also understand city rules and regulations uh, in order to expedite the process. And then on another component of this NYC best program will be providing education on how to avoid violations and fines. Um, we also work with closely with other city agencies, like for example, Ashley, with other city agencies, like for example, FDMI, DOB, um, DEP, and other state agencies, such as uh, New York State Liquor Authority, as well as utility companies. Uh, in the following slide, I'm gonna give you three examples that we cover. Currently, our NYC Best program cover food and drinking establishment as well as uh, general retail and personal care. So, including laundromat, um, hair salon, nail salon, supermarket, as well as restaurants. So, as I had mentioned earlier, that um, three of the key examples that our NYC Best help business owner with would be. Uh, for example, DOB with the permitting processes. So a lot of time when business owner during the bureau stage working with their licensed contractor, they get stuck with the processes. So our point of contact will help business owner to navigate the, you know, permitting process with DOB to make sure that there's no uh, hiccup or we, we can expedite the process. In terms of health department, we can also help business owner to navigate different type of food service establishment permit because there are so many different types of permit um, under the New York City Department of Health. So I think um, by connecting to our single point of contact will be easier to navigate which permit will be suitable for the business. Of course, during pandemic, we also help businesses to navigate DOT open restaurant program. Still as of today, we provide guidance on businesses that when they receive uh, notice from DOT in terms of um, their outdoor dining structure. As Another component that I briefly highlight earlier is the education. So our other service compliance consultation can provide a free line of sight ratio assessments to business owner uh, to help them with, you know, pointing out the most common violations of courts, different, um, you know, regulatory agencies, and it will and it will one-on-one -on -one coaching with the business owner to avoid the most common violations. And toward the end of the consultation appointment, they will also receive a copy of the checklist. And of course, after the consultation, if business owner have any questions regarding compliance or if they receive violations, our team can also provide assistance on clarif um, explaining to the business owner why they received this violation and how they can avoid them happening in the future. Just want to kind of highlight some of the milestones since the deployment of the two services. So in terms of um, small business advocate, they have been helping over 6,000 establishment to open, which also helped creating 50,000 jobs. And then compliance education, we have delivered over 10,000 compliance consultation across the files, which also helped business saving over $131 million in fines and penalties. During pandemic, we also helped over 390 businesses to stay in compliance with the New York City Open Restaurant Program. 
these are the highlights of the NYC Best programs. In addition to NYC Best, our SBS also offer different resources that are available for small businesses. For example, you have financing assistance, commercial lease assistance, which is highly uh, critical to business owner before they sign the lease. We also have MWB certification and mentorship opportunity. So for folks that who are interested to visit, um, you know, to learn more, they can visit our website at nyc.gov forward slash business. And of course, our NYC Best Program also have our landing page, which is nyc.gov forward slash NYC Best. Or for if businesses have any questions, they can also call us through our hotline at 888-727-4692. Uh, we also have staff member who can speak different languages uh, where the language line is also available. And if you want to follow us through our social media, you can follow us through different channels, um, you know, so so that you guys can give an update. And also, uh, in case if we're going to your neighborhood, um, we'll keep you posted as well. So that should conclude my presentation. Um, I just want to uh, use this opportunity to give shout out to Community Board 4 and Community Board 8 uh, because our team has been working with uh, you all and, you know, participating the corridor walk in Kingsbridge area. Uh, I believe Nick also mentioned that briefly. So I just want to say um, our work is just the beginning. So we'll look forward to cross our path um, more in the future. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michael. And before we turn it into questions, I just want to highlight that our, our office, the Bronx Borough President's Office, the BOEDC, and the NYC um, BEST team is working on collaborating and putting together a, a neighborhood outreach during Small Business Week. Um, so uh, stay tuned for, for that and, and for more information on that. Any questions for the SBS team, for Michael and the BEST initiative, Etta? Good morning and thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I would like to say that uh, I have, um, I know you have the New York's best program, but WETCO, uh, one of our longstanding um, community-based organizations, they received the 360 grant program. So they're doing, you know, they're working along the Southern Boulevard corridor with the business owners there to improve lighting and safety conditions. So I would like to see um, how we can coordinate also, because this is good information for the commercial owners to know about their businesses, you know, as far as loans and things of that nature and help them with the permit process. And that's why I wanted to say with, uh, along with BOEDC, I just wanted to say, I want to know how we can collaborate so that we can get something going along that corridor, that uh, Southern Boulevard corridor, um, because we do need some help, help with aesthetics along there, again, with lighting, you know, even though that's a DOT issue, but there's a lot of um, mom and pop shops there. And so we want to keep them in business and we want to help them to be able to take out, you know, and improve their businesses, take out whatever loans they may need to improve their businesses. And also just to also help them to educate themselves on how to go about, you know, the permitting process and the licensing process, you know, um, and it's great to know that you have language assistance there. So I would definitely like to get together with VOEDC and with the BEST program. I um, also wanted to let you know that I am hosting a resource fair along with Council Member Chantel Jackson's office, fronting my office on June 6th, I mean, July 6th, um, and it'll be from 10 to 4. So I had filled out an application online for uh, SBS to come and bring a van but I haven't heard anything. And and I when I was going through my emails, I couldn't even find um like a response. So I don't know if I'm moving too fast. So I just need some assistance with that because I would definitely like a van present um to provide services to the commercial businesses on that day during our resource fair. So if you could someone could send me some information who I can contact. I hope it's not too late. I would like I said, I would like to have a van there to um be present to 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 ask for for commercial owners to be able to you know address their concerns 
and I would love to have BOEDC there as well. And if I need to um, email, um, you left an email with M Strawbridge. Should I just email them requesting if they could come? Is that the right email I should use? Because, you know, is this like part of the community affairs unit or what? I'm, I'm crossing. I'm dealing with BOEDC and, and, and SBS at the same time. I'm trying to get my money's worth right now. I hear that. I hear that. On the BOEDC side, at a yes. Um, uh, Marsha will be your point, but I'll let Michael speak to the SBS component. As far as the SBS component, yes. How can I get assistance and get a van? Sure. It, um, so what you can do is um, you can send me an email. I have left my email address in the chat box. So okay. what I can do is I will connect you with uh, someone who oversees the outreach unit. Uh -huh. um, I think in terms of mobile unit, you're referring our Mobi. So, um, yeah, so I definitely will be happy, more than happy to connect you with um, my, you know, one of the assistant um, commissioner of their outreach unit. So, um, and then we'll take it from there. So that, that answer, you know, part of your question. So the second part of your question, I, I'm so glad that you mentioned Wenko. Actually, we have been... You know, since the launch of the NYC best, we've been working with Renko to build a relationship and also um, they have forward some cases for us to work on. So I think we already start uh, building such relationship by, okay. you know, working with different partners. Okay, thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Beautiful. I see uh, Nick Hen Hen is raised. Go ahead. Nick. Oh, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Michael, for the presentation. And I just wanted to acknowledge uh, and thank uh, Michael for um, uh, Angel and Blanca, the, the compliance officers that participated on Friday. The, the, the best program is a very valuable program. And it's uh, it's great that we can get more businesses to, to take advantage of it. And but just to put it in perspective, uh, you know, I, the, the numbers and the outreach is, is really impressive by SBS, but just so everybody understands, we have 1500 businesses alone just in CBA. So it's, oh. it's really an overwhelming task and there's the vast majority of our businesses aren't taking advantage of a lot of the services. And this is to, to uh, Mr. Walsh's point as well, is that we, we really have to reach more. So, um, you know, I really appreciate everything that SBS is doing and we're help, you know, more than happy to continue to partner to try to reach more of our businesses. So thank you and looking forward to working uh, working with you in the future as well. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. Beautiful. And Michael, thank you again. And thank you to SBS for, for being a part of today's borough board. Um, NYC Best is it's really the heart of it is helping small businesses navigate government. And, and that, as we know, can be a, a challenging process. So we thank you and, and we thank your um, your entire staff for your support on that. And, and we look forward to, to bringing you to, to EDA's resource fair in July and Moby as well. Thank you again. So, and, and I, I just want to reiterate, um, Michael did share his contact information as well as the NYC best landing page, the direct landing page. And as always, we will share the presentation with the entire board. Um, up next, we have a presentation by NYC Parks on enhancing our green spaces through stewardship. And we have Car Vetter, the art Outreach Coordinator for Partnership for Parks, and Carlos Martinez, the Director of NYC Green Thumbs. With that, Parks, the virtual floor is yours. All righty. Uh, Kevin Titas? Good, fantastic. Yes, thank you. Um, so my name is Carl Vetter. I'm one of the outreach coordinators from Partnerships for Parks. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know who we are, uh, we are a public-private partnership between City Parks Foundation and New York City Parks. Uh, we support and champion neighborhood volunteers in a variety of uh, uh, capacities, whether it's uh, individuals, community groups, uh, nonprofits. Uh, we help with design support, grants, and all ways to help people get involved in their parks. Um, so, as I mentioned before, uh, we develop uh, volunteers into community leaders. We provide tools needed to care for neighborhood parks through our signature It's My Park program, uh, the technical assistance I mentioned. Uh, and then we also connect community members to each other. Um, we help to develop these volunteers into community leaders and build long-term investment in public space to strengthen the social fabric of our neighborhoods. 
Uh, we do it because there are over 2,000 parks in New York City, and our green spaces are our backyards where we connect, play, and celebrate life's moments. Because when parks thrive, neighborhood thrives. Uh, park spaces are where community members can get together in their cities. Um, that being said, um, sometimes New Yorkers, we suffer from nature blindness. Um, all plants and animals may look the same. We may be looking at monocultures and we may lump species together under a common name. Um, in this example, I have a ladybug. But like, who is that lady? What's in a name? You know, there are over 5,000 species of ladybugs. And actually, they're all beetles um, because they, they uh, transform throughout their lives. And so um, common names are often an issue when we address uh, species um, because ladybugs aren't even ladies. Um, so now just looking at this slide, you can see four different species of ladybugs, lady beetles. Um, and if you try to count their spots, that may not always be the best option. But if you look further, you'll see that these bugs are all different. They are not the same bug. So when we introduce species into our environments, our system is changing. And so the insects that we see today may not be the insects our parents saw or our grandparents saw. Uh, the, the Halloween beetle only came in the Northeast in 1994, and our nine-spied lady beetle, which is our New York State insect, is now very hard to find. And so you may be wondering why I'm talking about ladybugs because iNaturalist is an app that I'm trying to, with the Bronx team, get out to our volunteers. Uh, this app allows anyone to carry a team of biologists in their pocket. It allows them to learn about the wildlife in their neighborhood. And it most importantly allows them to doc document their nature story. It creates a personal connection to their parks. And so it could be a flower outside your office like Renacqua. Um, and then when you learn about this flower, not only are you learning, you're supporting decision makers like the New York City Ecoflora Project. These observations that I'm making that anyone is making is going to a larger collective of decision makers. And it also connects us to other people who are also interested in the same things. Um, and this weekend, uh, with the support of uh, Council Member Dinowitz, we are hosting City Nature Festivals in Ewan Park on Sunday and Henry Hudson Park on Saturday. We will have urban park rangers, composting, uh, nature walks, binoculars, all the fun stuff to really give people the capacity to really connect with their space. Uh, because if we walk past a tree, an animal, and we don't know what it is, we'll keep walking. Um, so the goal of community science is to really allow people to become individual activists, stewards, advocators, supporters. Um, it's a new opportunity to, to steward uh, that is not just necessarily cleanups or stewardship. Um, because when we look at the Bronx, sometimes this is what we see. But if you're an animal or a wildlife expert, this is maybe more accurate as to what you see. A city that is connected by parks, connected by green streets, connected by all the little bits of green infrastructure that we have, um, that we all need to be working together, whether it's inside a park or just on our streets. Um, and using iNaturalist allows you to open up new doors to new opportunities, whether it's a community planting. Um, oftentimes people want to plant, it's very popular, but if you don't know what you're planting or you don't know what competition you're planting with, iNaturalist is a great tool to help you care for that plant after you plant it, to know when it's going to bloom, when it's going to have pest problems. Um, it also allows our volunteers to create more uh, STEM-related programming, whether it's scavenger hunts or bio blitzes, um, and then even crossing over into art, whether you want to do art opportunities using this iNaturalist app. Um, we're developing materials to try and make our volunteers more empowered, more confident in their parks. Um, and so uh, that is my general spiel uh, for parks. For parks. Uh, thank you for your time. And I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you so much, Carl. Any questions for our presenter? Wonderful, Carl. It will be helpful if you could also share your contact information. In of course, come coming up, into come the chat. Later. Thank you. Great. And so with that, we'll transition to Carlos Martinez from NYC Parks Green Thumb Initiative. 
Thank you so much, Carl. Good morning, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Carlos Martinez, and I am the director of NYC Bar Screen Thumb. Thanks for inviting me to the joint meeting of the Bronx Borough Service Cabinet and the Bronx Borough Board. For those who are not familiar with our program, uh, Green Thumb is the community gardening program of the New York City Park Department, and our mission is to support, educate, and sustain gardeners and urban farmers caring for over 550 community spaces across the five boroughs. In this slide, you can see the geographic distribution of gardens across the city, which are stored by 20,000 volunteers. Gardens are generally divided uh, into. Uh, two. Um, Chris, can you can you mute uh, Robert, please? I don't think he can hear us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Gardens. Thank you. Community, community gardens are generally divided into different groups. Uh, the ones licensed uh, licensed gardens under the jurisdiction of NYC Parks. And gardens under a different jurisdiction registered with Green Thumb, and those include government agencies, land trusts, and even private property. Licensed and registered gardens receive support from the Green Thumb program. Some examples of those agencies include DEP, DOT, FDNY, HPD, NYPD, DOE. Uh, we also have a partnership with NYCHA. Uh, we also have gardens in DOT property, MTA, and other uh, partnerships with land trusts like New York Restoration Project. I just want to go back really quick to the other sl slide. Uh, I just want to show you that the Bronx is the third borough with the highest number of community gardens. In this slide, you can see the geographic distribution across the borough in the Bronx, and especially the concentration of gardens that we have in Melrose, Highbridge, and Mud Haven. There's a typo on this slide. My apologies. The right column should read uh, that's the actual number of gardens per jurisdiction. So we have 72 gardens under parks jurisdiction. 17 under the Bronx Land Trust, 13 under New York Restoration Project. As I mentioned before, we have nine uh, gardens in partnership with, with NYCHA in nine different developments, three gardens uh, with the Department of Transportation, two in private property, and one uh, and two with MTA. Green Thumb provides uh, support gardeners with different resources. We connect them through uh, to material support, garden supplies, workshops, trainings, events, and programming and technical assistance. All this is provided uh, for free to all the gardens registered with us. As part of this support, we um, we have two community engagement coordinators connecting gardeners in the Bronx. Uh, I will share this presentation with, with all of you, and I'll pull this information in the chat uh, once my presentation is over, but Tanisha Morrison is our senior community engagement coordinator in the Bronx. Um, she oversees a portfolio of gardens in Committee Board 2, Committee 4 through 12, and Ijendu uh, has a portfolio in the South Bronx, Committee Board 1 and 3. There are multiple ways to get involved in community gardening. You can join your local community garden as a dedicated member or provide a helping hand through episodic volunteer projects or even just participate in our free workshops, trainings, and public events. Here are some examples of our gardens across the city uh, and the type of programming that we support. And that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I will take any questions and then I'll put the information in the chat so you can reach me. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos. I have a quick question before we we pass it on to questions. Um, is there a breakdown of um, community garden community gardens by community boards that Parks possesses? Yes, I okay. I have that information. I'm happy to send it to you, uh, Janet. Um, so if you send me your, your email, I'm happy to send you all that information. Great. Mara, so if you can just follow up so we can share that with the entire board afterwards. And I believe I saw a hand raised. It's definitely mine. Dr. Keck. <laughs> Good morning. Mm -hmm. I loved your presentation uh, and the one before it actually too. Um, I had a question about clean soil. Uh, at some point last year, the mayor's office uh, reached out to us and said that the four community gardens in the Bronx that they had available um, clean soil. Is, does that come through you or through the Green Thumb program or was that just a separate initiative? Because um, our gardens didn't know about it, and we too have been trying to create a network and mapping out, um, and we're hoping to have that on our website soon, of all the community gardens that actually produce food, because our interest was in food insecurity and, and how and where that food gets distributed to pantries and needy families. So you, Nancy, that's, you... A, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, let me start with the first one with, about soil. So there are there is a separate initiative with the mayor's office of environmental remediation and they provide what is called clean soil this right. is the soil that is generated from development sites it's like pristine inorganic material excavated through in in when they're doing a construction of buildings in new york city so uh -huh. this again this is inorganic there's not there's no nutrients in that material that material is good for uh, leveling sites or we use that material for special projects, yeah. but we green them, we provide free soil to gardeners and this soil is tested. So we know that it's free of any contaminants and is it meets the requirement for food production. Okay. And it also makes and we also provide compost, which is the uh, additional nutrients for, for these gardens to, to, to produce food. Yes, we do have um, in our website. I'll put the, the website in, in the chat. We have an, uh, a very handy um, online map. Mm -hmm. You can see all our our gardens across the city. But if you need like a specific data, happy to give you like a GIS layer for your specific community board. So you can identify which gardens are in, in the district and also which gardens grow food as well. And if you want to have a convening with gardeners, we're happy to uh, facilitate those conversations with gardeners. Okay. I hope I answered all your questions, Nancy. You did. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anytime. Thank you so much, Nancy. Robert, CB4. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks for the presentation. Uh, did listen to it. Uh, gardening was my gateway into the board and so on and so forth. That's where I came through. Uh, pruning certificate, compost certificate. So, I, so I'm a believer. At this point, my question is: At this point, are any of the uh, gardens in th threatened to lose their status for to developers, so and so forth? You know that we went through some years ago. They were here in the Bronx or not? Thank you, Roy, for your question. So, all the gardens under uh, our jurisdiction are uh are protected through the license agreement i'm happy to report that in the past we used to have a four-year license agreement but starting this year uh we issued the licenses for 10 years this is also to tell gardeners that these spaces are very valuable and these gardens are here to stay so as long as the garden groups continue to garden the space that we have an active garden the the use of that space as a community garden will remain. So we, that, that's why we encourage gardeners to always sign the license agreement and to have a continuous uh, activity in the garden. Some gardens have, um, have been impacted by low membership, but that's our role. Our role is to support and, and increase the membership and, and, and bring more people into the spaces to maintain active these spaces. If you have any uh, concerns about like, uh, Inactive gardens, we're happy to to be alert and then take take action and support that specific garden. But I know in the past there were some uh, concerns about um, 
gardens being threatened by development, that's not going to happen in gardens under our jurisdiction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. And I thought uh, Shirley's hand was raised. The question was actually answered, but I'll do a follow up. Okay. Um, it's just a quick follow up about um, the collaboration with NYCHA Gardens. I know we have one, I believe it's in, in our Soundview houses. Um, what, what um, how much of the resources comes from parks? Does NYCHA provide some of the resources? Um, I know I hear from, I think it's Deborah Segarra, the person who leads the, the garden there, and she's always in need of resources. And so I'm wondering, how does that work with that partnership? Thank you for that question. So, uh, in the previous administration with the mayor de Blasio, um, we established this partnership with NYCHA. And it's called the Green Talk Community Gardens at Nature. Uh, the goal is to have 50 community gardens in 50 developments in partnership with them. I think we are over half of that goal. Um, the criteria for these gardens to be part of, of our network is that this garden needs to be, first of all, being identified as an active garden in our survey back in 2017. And then that the garden needs to be located adjacent to the sidewalk. It needs to be accessible for the public and it needs to be accessible to everyone in the community. Yes, many these gardens are in natural property, but in this partnership, the idea is to open it up this as a community asset and bring neighbors from the NYCHA community or the, the, the neighborhood to also join the, the garden. It's, it's, uh, our spaces are community spaces. And there's a requirement of maintaining this uh, to open the spaces at least 20 hours uh, per week during the growing season. Our growing season grows from April 1st to October 31st. So um, happy to be put in touch with 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 the garden that you have in NYCHA to see if if it's part of our existing partnership, and if so, happy to provide any resources they need. NYCHA provides um, help us like talk to the residents um help us with the property management of the space and then we bring all the resources with this partnership basically is we come in and then we rebuild and expand the community garden and as you know there's a lot of interest about gardens increasing food production and that's where we come in with new mm -hmm. raised beds clean soil accessible pathways and um, sitting areas benches and gazebos all, all the whole package so i think um it's a really true partnership, and, and and then we're very excited about getting to the fifty, um, potentially maybe fifty more in the next year or two. Thank you, and just a quick shout out to our board member Tanisha. Thank you. Great, um, Anthony. I did see your hand raised. I don't know if you if you still have a question. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Was answered in the chat. Thank Great. you very much. Great, Etta. I see your hand raised. Yes, once again, thank you so much, Carlos. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for how um, prompt you are in, you know, responding to Carmen Rodriguez, who is one of the advocates for the um, CS-134 Community Garden. I really appreciate your attentiveness to um, her request as far as getting that garden back up and running. And um, the community's desire to rename uh, that garden um, uh, under the late uh, Cordelia Guilford, who was a longstanding board member at Community Board 3. And I hope that that can happen um, this summer when they had the, their little uh, street event at that time. But I wanted to just ask you, um, is it possible <clears throat> if you could send um, maybe all the community boards a listing of all the gardens that are under your jurisdiction? If we could get a listing of that, I would really appreciate that. I may have it in my files, but I'm currently, you know, I'm still like juggling. I'm working by myself. And so um, I may have overlooked it. But if you can have someone like send us just, you know, what gardens are that are registered on the DPR, I would truly appreciate that. And I, too, would like to, um, my board member left. I had um, one of my board members on, too, but I believe he left uh and that was um cruz vladimir cruz from partnership for parks but um i just wanted to ask you that and just to keep up with um 
you know, again, to just thank you for your responses when um, we request updates for the community, CS 134 Community Garden. I thank you so much for that. Thank you, Ada. Uh, fine, uh, uh, pleasure meeting you uh, virtually. I know we've been exchanging in emails. Um, I will circle back with Janet's office about the, the list of all the gardens. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the, the, the renaming of the garden, uh, we're actually working in the production of the new sign. So that's happening. Yeah. And the reopening, I think, as you know, we had some issues with um, plumbing. The contractor uh, and doing the capital project there, but I think we're aiming to have it open uh, by this summer. In and basically, we're on track to do the the block party associated with the reopening of the, of the site. I think we are very optimistic about that. And I had the pleasure to meet uh, uh, the the gardener uh, Cordelia. Oh. So yeah, so um, okay, this is a beautiful woman. Yeah, so I think hopefully I I, I will see you there. Yes, I hope so. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you for your question, Eda. Any other questions for Parks, for Carlos? Okay, seeing none. Um, Carlos, thank you again. We heard it here first. The resources are there. Um, so let's develop our green thumbs and grow our gardens and bring our borough to the top spot in that garden list for the city of New York. Thank you so much, Carlos. And again, we will appreciate the DPR list and the breakdown uh, of gardens via community boards and um, our team will make sure to share that with the entire board. Thank you again. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. And up next, we have a representative from the New York City of uh, the N NYC Mayor's Office Community Assist uh, Affairs Unit, uh, Ray Car Carrero, Director of Quality of Life. Um, uh, the mayor, uh, the mayor is asking upon community boards and community and council members and business improvement districts to submit a request for expression of interest and RFI for the development of a neighborhood support team. And so with that, we have Ray Carrero presenting on this RFI. Uh, Ray, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to talk about the neighborhood support team. Uh, the neighborhood support team was created uh, out of a uh, local law 102 that was voted into um, by the city council basically to re that requires the city to develop a list of no fewer than three uh, geographic areas the geographic areas are community boards and we're going to be uh so we're soliciting our requests of interest from community boards and other partners and nonprofits. um that uh, can su can submit quality of life concerns or issues. It's a the application itself is a simple process. What we need is the partners uh, from the community boards. The community board itself, members from the community boards and your different committees, can submit uh, the request of interest. Uh, nonprofits uh, also within your districts can support it. Uh, the idea is to develop a multi-agency uh, response to address the conditions, a lot like a broken window theory. So we we're going to be coming into a neighborhood, the neighborhood that is selected, and it is a competitive because there's a there, there are resources that uh, won't allow us to do all community boards in in the city. So we're we're looking at a worst case scenario doing five, one for each borough, but I think we could do um, a lot more or maybe a few more, but that depends on the partners that we have, uh, the community boards and the nonprofits and the other people who submit the, the requests of interest. Um, we're going to try, even if it's, if it's a bunch of different uh submissions within a community board we'll lump them all together and again like uh the broken window theory we'll systematically go out and start addressing all of these conditions um as a group um uh graffiti all of the graffiti within the community board we'll be looking at um uh, homeless encampments illegal vending and across the board uh if it's an issue that is a concern to the community and the community wants it addressed um this would be a group a good opportunity for us to come in 
multi-agency initiatives address all of the issues systematically and the the program also allows us to stay within that community board for a year so a lot can be done within the year as as you go along um probably there 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 are some issues that have been stubborn and have you haven't been able to move for a while um the challenges are are things that we're looking for if there are complex issues or there are things that we haven't been able to you know move the needle on um i welcome those as well the the application uh deadline for submission is may 31st we will be deciding uh which community boards will be receiving the nst, NST programs in june 15th so i'm urging everyone to go to our website i'm going to put in the chat right now uh, a link to the neighbor support team and let's see I think I, yeah, I just put it up there. I think so. Try again, send to everyone. Okay, so. Okay, that's it. And I'm gonna put my contact information as well. So anybody that wants to ask questions or or wants to wants to discuss the exactly what we can do at, uh, in the programs or has some ideas. It's also going to include uh, participation from the community groups themselves. So we're going to turn it into a partnership between city and community, kind of old school, uh, working with them. We all know that we have budget issues right now in the city. so. We uh, partnering up with our nonprofits and our civics may help in some instances uh, bridge some gaps that you know we won't have resources to do. And um, when we're tightening our belt, we I think we've all been in city government for a long time. Uh, we have to find creative ways to solve problems sometimes. And I got the link there. I'm putting in my phone number. So if anybody wants to give me a call and I'll give you uh, my email address as well. I urge everyone to go to uh, the CAU website, uh, look at the explanation on the, on the neighbor support team. There's a lot of information there that you can look at. You have the timetables of the submission and when it's going to be um uh, announce which where we're going as well as other information that you have there uh i have my my colleague uh elena on as well she could be a good contact if you have questions or you want to work with her on on helping to develop uh, uh a request of interest the, again the application process is is very simple so it's open for anybody uh in in the community there are conditions the projects cannot be any any smaller than three blocks uh so anybody wants to submit uh an application can do so um and if if it's just one three blocks we're going to be looking at other projects that are submitted within those community boards as well and we'll lump them all together so uh block association can submit and if that community board is selected, um, it'll be it'll be included in their projects. Thank you so much, Ray. Um, and and really quickly on, can you speak a little bit on the selection process of the R RFEI? Is the mayor's office looking to use external data like NYPD data, MRA data? in order to help influence the decision making the well, selection the, process the the process is going to be community driven is okay. is more in the interest of the community how many uh people in the community are interested in participating and being active it's kind of a uh, community organizing as well okay. 
pattern. Okay. Uh, so we need the partners. We need we, we need the people in the community to be an active uh, player. Um, you know, it's it, it's easy to go and look at this data, but uh, these this kind of project is is all inclusive. And I think I think going towards the community and looking for communities that are interested in actively participating is going to be key to success. Couldn't agree more. Ed, I see your hand raised. Uh, we have we have time for maybe one or two questions. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I'm a little talkative this morning, but um, this interested me from the very beginning. I was sent this email um, from my rep, um, Leonardo Coelho, and I had asked him at the time, I said, before I sent it out, I said, so should I just send this to my board members? Uh, because I don't have a, I, I have a separate listserv for my board members, but I don't have a separate listserv for just my community-based organizations that I'm working on uh, currently. However, he said, oh, just send it out to everybody. So I sent it out to all of those on my listserv, right? This particular, is because this is the same thing as uh, what he sent out, right? It was about quality of life issues. So some of my homeowners, of course, they looked at it and they said they tried to enter information into the system, but they weren't able to. They was unsure because I believe it was examples of are you a community board member? Uh, are you a community-based organization? And I believe it had something maybe about elected officials. They had to choose um, which one they were a part of and they weren't a part of either, any of those. So they got stuck and... Um, so they started sending me some of their issues, which is fine. So again, I understand you saying that this is built on community partnerships, right? And everybody can enter. So I, I haven't gone on it personally. I haven't had the opportunity to really look at it the way I should. Um, however, you're saying that anybody, um, any resident can fill this out and enter in? Well, well, let, let me... Right. Let me clarify that. Okay. It, it is meant for active groups like a block association, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, a CBO, uh, community board, uh, precinct council, okay. those type of entities, not, you know, the guy on the block who's looking across the street. Thank you. At, at the stuff. Okay. So you've answered my question. Yes. And this was the question I asked um, Coelho, but he. He wasn't really sure, so I, that's why I just sent it out to everybody, because then I would have took my time and, and, and would have been a little more selective. But thank you. You've answered my question, and I know how to go forward moving forward. Thank you. Welcome. And just for awareness, Ray has shared his direct contact and email address in the chat. Um, we also dropped some information regarding the RFEI on the chat as well in terms of background. Thank you so much, Ray, and thank you for the CAU team um, for for coming on. Um, for everyone that's on here, we encourage you to to apply and and uh, make sure that you submit a submission. As we all know, quality of life issues here in the Bronx are public service, public safety issues and concerns, and so this is a great opportunity for us to um, to put that in writing and submit for the record. Any any questions for Ray and the CAU team, the mayor's office team? Okay, wonderful. Seeing no questions, Ray. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you to the mayor's office and the CAU team for for hopping on and presenting. Um, just a, a reminder: the the deadline is uh, fastly approaching, so let's just make sure that that we get those submissions in. Um, with that, we'll turn it into announcements. If there are any uh, city agencies, community boards, or uh, elected reps that want to share any announcements. Hello. CEC. Hi, yes. Benjamin. Um, Hi. I just want to make an announcement from Community Board 6 uh, and 5. We're hosting a joint meeting on Monday evening to discuss DHS's shelter siting policy. Um, both Board 5 and 6 have lots of homeless shelters, while many communities in the city have none. Um, so we're holding a joint meeting, a community conversation to discuss what effects that's happening on our communities and why DHS's lack of a citywide policy is negatively affecting the Bronx. So I will send this out to the DMs in an email today just to notify you by this meeting on Monday evening. Thanks. Thank you, Rafael. Um, Benjamin, CEC. 
Yeah, hi. Great to be here. It's nice to see everybody. Thanks for having me for a minute. I just want to um, make sure that everybody knows I sent out an email to all the, the boards yesterday, or maybe the day before, uh, our citywide participatory budgeting vote. The people's money is coming up. It's going to start on May 10th through June 25th. It is the first time that everybody in New York City will get to vote on how to spend part of the public budget. You, all you have to do is be 11 years old or older and live in New York City. So uh, keep an eye out for that. We, there is op, uh, opportunities for some funding assistance. If, you, if anybody wants to help get out the vote, that'd be great. We also, if not, uh, you know, we also will be sharing social media kits uh, and, and links for people for you to share with all your members and constituents. So it's um, going to be really exciting. It's like I said, it's from May 10th to June 25th. Um, I'll put my contact in the email. But I think a lot of you have it. We have a couple more uh, workshops coming up too, which I, I sh I've shared uh, another uh, two from the uh, HPD on affordable and fair housing, and then a few more on parliamentary procedures coming up before we sort of wrap up uh, this spring's series of workshops. So um, thank you for everything you guys do. Uh, I'm always here. I'll put my uh, contact in the chat um, for anything the CEC can help with. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benjamin. And um, the social media toolkit, if you can share that with Mara, so that way we can um, share broadly with, with everyone. Of course. Um, and I know we're at time, um, but if, if folks can just hold on for two more minutes, Anthony, I know you have your hand raised. Um, and we also have a list of uh, announcements from the Bronx Borough President's Office. Anthony? Very quickly, Madam Deputy, thank you. CB1 is hiring for a new committee associate and it is you should visit the nyc.gov backslash jobs and look under cb1 to um, go onto our e-hire system to apply for the position and we're excited to um, be able to just look up candidates thank you thank you so much and with that we'll move to the bronx borough president's announcements as rob mentioned earlier bronx week or weeks <laughs> is coming up um, and to present on that really briefly on just the timeline and the schedule, we have Julius Drake from the Bronx Tourism Council. Yes. Julius, welcome. Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. Uh, I am so excited to be a part of this meeting. Um, everything that was shared was so informative. I think this is my first meeting. <laughs> Uh, so I'm so super excited, but I'm even more super charged about Bronx Week 2023. And Bronx Week 2023 is scheduled uh, from May 8th to uh, May 21st. And our theme this year is a global destination because as a tourism team, we are him and we are charged and we're pumped up to make the Bronx a global destination. And you are going to experience that in Bronx Week. And just to let you also know about Bronx Ball, uh, Bronx Ball is going to be the first time ever we're having Bronx Ball at the Bronx Zoo. So we're excited about that too. And it's going to be on May 20th at 6 p.m. Uh, we are um, we are doing things a little bit different here. Uh, for the first time ever, included in the Bronx wall, Bronx uh, Ball, as you all know, we have the Bronx Walk of Fame. First of all, are you guys hearing me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, we have the Bronx Walk of Fame. And the Bronx Walk of Fame include inductees um, that have made significant con contribution to the borough and we're inducting them. And this year, for the first time in history, we have listened to the people of the Bronx because that is what this ad administration is all about. And we have created the People's Choice Award in Education. And we have selected that person. I'm so sorry, I'm not able to say who it is as yet until the BPs make our announcement on May 8th at the press conference. So we are super, super charged about that. Bronx Week is gonna be uh, different. It's gonna be um, a, a phenomenal experience this year. And we're looking for you to be out in your numbers. We're, I'm gonna send you all the information for the invitation for the Bronx Ball. I'm also gonna send you the calendar of events for Bronx Week. And we're looking to see all board, community board members uh, in Bronx Week and at Bronx Ball. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Julius. Thank you, thank you for that. And as Julius mentioned, we'll share that uh, broadly with all our members of our board. Up next, we have Kira Gannon, our Director of Community Boards, uh, to present on upcoming trainings. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I just want to thank Benjamin Solitaire from the Civic Engagement Commission 
Um, they've been putting together some great trainings for our board members and board staff um, upcoming. And I, I've sent these to the board offices and I'm happy to resend. There's trainings on Robert's Rules of Order, parliamentary procedures, and then um, affordable housing on May 2nd and fair housing on May 9th. These are great trainings that each board member should really try to make their um there, the presentations will be will be made available afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. We're also can I just chime in? We'll also be at Bronx Week on June twenty, uh, May twenty first. So we look forward to being part of that wonderful event. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so we'll wrap here. Uh, just want to mention that our next borough board service cabinet meeting is scheduled for May twenty fifth. And as always, we will share an agenda beforehand. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining us this morning and for being patient, staying in an extra five minutes. Um, happy April. We're almost wrapping up on the month, um, but looking forward to uh, May and, and springtime. Thank you all. Have a blessed rest of your week, and thank you for joining us this morning. We'll make sure to share all information and presentations to the larger group. Thank you. Be well. Happy Mother's Day to those to those mothers in May. All right, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Be well. All right, we're done with the recording. I'm just gonna end the stream, but everybody else is all set. So thank you everybody.